Hi, everybody. I'm David Ignatius, a columnist for The Washington Post. I'm pleased to welcome you to a special conversation today about veterans' issues, especially focusing on health care. We have, uh, to begin our discussion, Senator Tom Tillis, a Republican from North Carolina, a member of the Veterans Affairs Committee in the Senate, who has worked hard across the aisle to focus on key health care issues affecting veterans, especially the issue of burn pits, something that may not be familiar to all of our viewers, but I hope by the end of our program it will be. So, Senator Tillis, uh, welcome to our discussion. It's great to have you with us. Maybe you could begin by just explaining what these burn pits were in Iraq and Afghanistan. What was put in them? And what are the health dangers? Well, first, David, I, I want to thank the Washington Post for helping us increase awareness on what we're talking about. We, we, I want to talk, and I hope that we get in the discussion about some of the past exposures, like the uh, toxic exposures down at Camp Lejeune, something I started working on back when I was in the State House as Speaker. But when I got up here and I saw the, uh, the data is very compelling that we had a number of operators in the Middle East who after uh, they moved into an area as they're securing the area, the, uh, the standard operating procedure was to burn computers, disk drives, equipment uh, before they left to make sure it wasn't salvageable. And now we know that those uh, uh, various materials have toxic substances that we think are related to diseases that men and women uh, in Afghanistan and throughout the Middle East could have been exposed to. I wrote an op-ed with Senator Klobuchar basically saying that this could be this generation's Agent Orange. We need to get ahead of it. We need to accelerate care options for people currently actively serving and, and those who are in veteran status, we want to get ahead of this. We don't want to have the years long struggle to make the presumptions right so that they can get the health care they deserve. Senator, we'll talk in a minute about how we might uh, get ahead of the problem, as you suggest. But first, give us a sense of, of the scope of this problem. How many uh, American uh, uh, servicemen and women and contractors might have been exposed to what was in these burn pits, the, the toxic uh, fumes and, and consequences. We're really trying to get to the bottom of that because uh, I should have said uh, early on that we think about burn pits, but there are also other potential toxic exposures that uh, could have just been where you were based. So not necessarily related to a specific operation. One of the things that I've suggested, I chair the personnel subcommittee on Senate Armed Services. I would like to make sure that the health record reflects the movement of a man or woman in uniform throughout the life of their active service. Uh, whether it was a burn pit incident, whether or not they were somewhere where dangerous materials were being uh, transferred that they were in close proximity to, we need to capture that information now, even before they could exhibit any sort of healthcare consequences and maybe even get to a point to where we can predict that they need care even before the man, and woman, man or woman in uniform even understands or has any symptoms. That's the level of, of granularity that we need to get to. That's going to require us to go back and look at everybody, where they moved, our knowledge of where toxic substances could have potentially been, be, and make sure that that's all incorporated into their health chart going forward. So just to give our viewers some sense of the uh, magnitude of this, some journalistic estimates have put the number of people who may have been exposed to to toxic uh, fumes or substances at these burn pits as high as 175,000. Don't know whether that figure is going to bear out, but it, it suggests that this is a, a significant problem. Senator, you said that you want to get ahead of this. Uh, unlike uh, other issues in the past, like Agent Orange, where we spent years, really decades, struggling to figure out compensation and liability issues. You want to do something right away about the health of these veterans. Maybe you could talk about your approach to dealing with, with the burn pit health healthcare problems. I should also say it's very personal to me. My wife's uncle uh, died from Agent Orange exposure. He was in combat in Vietnam. Um, it took decades to get to the point to where we were providing proper care and support for veterans of the Vietnam War. We cannot afford to take decades. The technology, the science, the information we have access to is something that we should be able to get done very quickly. 
we only got a lot of the presumptive illnesses for toxic substances at Camp Lejeune ultimately approved back in 2017. That's when, after I'd spent about three years my, uh, here in my tenure in the U.S. Senate trying to get done what Senator Burr and everyone else had been doing for years. We just got to get ahead of it. That's why we need an independent agency to really understand the, uh, the nature of the exposures, and then they can give us guidance on the population that was actually affected. But this is something that we should be talking about getting done in this Congress or the next Congress with the right information and getting ahead of this, because I actually believe if we do, we may be at a point to where the more acute conditions can be avoided by giving the presumption of care sooner. And we also have to work with the, the VA and the DOD to understand, look, if, if we identify an exposure we're not gonna give you an unfunded mandate that you have to work within your current budget. That's a part of the tug and pull that I've observed up here. Assume that with independent advice, we identify where we're responsible for the health and safety of service members and veterans. And then we, it's on us, Congress, to make sure you have the resources to provide the care. This should never be about money. This should be about providing care to service members and veterans. So, Senator, one of the interesting, uh, unusual things in uh, Washington that sometimes it seems kind of paralyzed uh, by division is the broad coalition that, that you've got working to advance uh, this idea of, of taking better care of, of veterans' health. Uh, the, the coalition, uh, as I understand it, is known as the Team Coalition. Tell us a little bit about the groups you, you brought together here? Well, I think this is remarkable. And they put down, uh, they've laid down a bill that we think is a great baseline for getting bipartisan support. The, the veteran service organizations work together a lot of times, but frequently they have things that are at odds with one another. To have 30 veterans or service organizations come together with the team coalition is extraordinary. It's why I'm very, very optimistic that with that coalition, we can get the support we need in the Senate. And I'll defer to my House colleagues uh, in the uh, interview a little bit later, but I think we'll have strong support for it. Again, it's gonna be science-based. It, it's, it's going to be based on scientifically driven recommendations for presumptions of illnesses that could have been caused by these, uh, by these exposures, burn pits or other toxic exposures. And then we just fast track the uh, provision of care. Senator, I think it would interest our viewers if you just tell the backstory of your interest in this um, through Camp Lejeune uh, in, in your state and your concern about, about tainted water there that was causing serious health problems and trying to get to the bottom of that. Walk us through that. Well, we got, in, uh, we got into the middle of uh, some of the internal experts at VA were taking a more conservative view about the presumptions. The, the presumptions basically are the trigger that provides care to those who were uh, potentially exposed. And we just decided that we wanted to flip the presumption. And one of the ways that we did that is we went to the CD CDC and other expert advisors who said there's a scientific basis for assuming that they were in Lejeune for a period of time, they were likely exposed. And for that reason, we should just assume that they, pro they should be provided care. Same sort of construct needs to work here with burn tip pits or any toxic exposures. And it's also important uh, to mention particularly domestically or in foreign bases, that we have to include family members. Uh, you know, a part of what we focused on at Camp Lejeune is the exposure of family members and giving them the health care that they deserve. So when we cast that net and we try to find every incident that could have been a toxic exposure, it's not just burn pits in the Middle East or people who were uh, forward deployed in, in combat situations. It's also chemical exposures here at home, like Camp Lejeune. That way, we're going to we're going to cast a wider net, and we're probably going to save a lot of lives in the process. So one one takeaway for me, Senator, is your your phrase the presumption uh, of care. Let me just ask uh, the, the burn pit the toxic toxic exposure problem uh, obviously affects the lungs in many cases, and we have now a pandemic that has terrible consequences for, for lung compromised people. Do our veterans have, have special uh, vulnerabilities to COVID-19 because of some of these exposures you're trying to track down? Well, they could very well. Uh, uh, some, of the, um, uh, some of the reports that we've gotten uh, have it manifest itself in terms of respiratory distress. That's clearly an at-risk indicator for COVID-19. 
Um, there's a number of other things that, uh, that just basically affect your immune response. There's a number of things that we need to get down to, but there's no question in my mind that at least with some of the reports we've gotten out of burn pits, we've, we've had a number of people report uh, before oversight committees that uh, their husband or wife came back with respiratory problems. That's a key risk factor in COVID-19. Um, that's why we have to accelerate it. You know, the, the, I have to, I hate to, to get down the weeds, but I think it's so important. Whether it's the exposure to toxic substances, whether it's the, the, uh, the uh, repeated exposure to low level concussive events that have been linked to traumatic brain injury and uh, PTS. These are the sorts of things that we need to get down, get down right in the soldier's health record. I really want to get to a point to where we have the data to predict a risk before the, the soldier, the serviceman, or the veteran ever we would even expect that they're at risk. So it's not only making sure when you come to a VA facility or a DOD hospital that we have the presumption to provide you with care. I wanna move it further up into the life cycle and try to find accelerated ways to identify and intervene long before these complications ultimately affect a service member.